cord to plug this in. So I'm hoping that <clears throat> this lasts. <laughs> so anyway, I'm going to do the very best job that I can. And I'm going to try to keep an eye on the time and everything like that. Now, last week we went down through where? Where did we get through last week? Exodus 23, 24, somewhere around that general area. I think 23, verse 1. 23, verse 1. And that's kind of what I was thinking as well. And what I was going to do, and what I'm going to do tonight, is two things. Number one, we're going to key in on the ratification of the covenant, as we've been talking about the last couple of weeks. Then we're also going to talk about the golden calf incident. We're actually going to skip a few chapters. The next week, which should be the last week, uh, then we're going to cover the tabernacle and all the things that's going on with the tabernacle. I don't want you to get to the point where you get, and sometimes this is a problem when you're teaching this, is especially when you're reading the last part of Exodus, whenever he gives the instructions for the tabernacle twice, you're getting bogged down like, why do I need to know this? Okay, and so we're going to try to talk about that and see the, the similarities and what we can learn from it in the New Testament in that respect as well. So that's my plan, all righty, and uh, pray that I can do the plan. Again, I apologize to everybody that came tonight uh, about the situation with the door. Um, you, <clears throat> some of you parked up there already, and if you want to go out that way, that's fine. Um, <laughs> you can command this way, but uh, I, I, we worked that out as well, all righty. Um, chapter 23. Before we go any further, though, let's pray. Uh, Seth, would you lead us in a word of prayer, please, brother? Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this time that we have together to study your word. Heavenly Father, uh, help us to retain all this information and help Brother Tommy to do a good job in, in teaching us this class. And Father, help his laptop to keep his charge so we can finish it and all the online students can get all their information as well. Father, whatever we're learning here, help us to take it and also become teachers who teach those who are around us and always extend the border to your kingdom, Father. Please forgive us our sins. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Seth, for that prayer. I appreciate that more than you know. And uh, you're right. The way you learn this stuff is by what? Teaching it. I guarantee you, if you go from this and you go back to a class and you try to teach this, even in a young kid's class, and you teach them about all the stuff in Exodus, you're going to remember a whole lot more. And that's one of the reasons why I continue to teach and want to continue to teach as long as I have a chance to, because I need, I need to constantly bone up on it myself. Back in Exodus 19, God began to give them the covenant. And we remember that they had to, clear, uh, to sanctify themselves, set themselves apart. In chapter 20, we actually read of the Ten Commandments. Where is the parallel passage for this? Where does Moses once again repeat the Ten Commandments? Anybody remember off the top of your head? Yes, no, maybe so. Deuteronomy chapter 5. Exodus 20 and Deuteronomy chapter 5 both give a list of the Ten Commandments. And in the Exodus account is where he's actually, God actually spoke to the people, gave them that Ten Commandments, and this was the beginning of the covenant. Then he began to talk about how these laws, these commandments are going to be brought out in various ways. In chapter 21, he dealt with a time where again that they had servants, and this was the way that they took care of people at that time. People would a lot of times would sell themselves, maybe even sell their family into slavery so as to pay and take care of themselves. He talked about the law concerning violence, and the idea, and we emphasized this earlier, of murder, kidnapping, uh, what happens if you beat a male or a female servant with a rod? Uh, and we talked about 2122, where he talks about if you hurt a woman that's pregnant and she has the baby and the baby dies, then you have to pay as a result. We talked about the animal control laws, beginning in verse 28 through 36. Beginning in chapter 22, again, very quickly, we emphasize the idea of the responsibility of property. Again, thou shalt not steal. So again, trying to deal with that whole situation about stealing. If you steal an ox, what's the penalty? You had to give the ox back plus four more. Okay, so that's pretty stiff, pretty stiff any way you want to look at it in that respect. Uh, if a man is found breaking into your house in the middle of the night and you kill him, you're not going to be held accountable, but if it's during the day, you would be because then you would be able to see if the man is just trying to steal your thing or trying to take your life. There's a difference, right? Uh, <clears throat> if a man 
uh, is out in the field and he is burning thorns and the fire catches onto the wheat field next to you, you've got to pay for the wheat field. You've got to pay for all the crop. All right. So he, he just got us given all of these various things. He emphasizes again. And when we get down here, all of these, again, just kind of go back to a more specific application of the Old Testament law, the Ten Commandment law. If a man entices a virgin, and then you will have to uh, pay the bride price for her. Uh, you, you know, and then it goes into some other things that we're kind of just really blowing our mind about. Uh, a sorceress, a witch, whoever lies with an animal shall surely be put to death. So we went on down through there talking about these things. Then we come to chapter 23. And you remember, he, one of the Ten Commandments also is thou shalt not lie, right? All right? And so here you have the ideal of justice for all. You shall not circulate a false report. Now, think about that for just a minute. If we really understood the penalty behind that, then that could be what? Uh, that stop a lot of gossip, right? So he, he's emphasizing this idea. You shall not be an unrighteous witness. You shall not follow a crowd to do evil. Isn't it interesting that whenever you get a mob going on, and more often than not, that's whenever evil happens. Jesus was put to death because the chief elders incited the mob to say, crucify him, right? So again, all of this, <clears throat> he emphasizes the idea in verse 23, chapter 23, verse 4. If you meet an enemy's ox and donkey going astray, you shall bring it back to him again. You should care enough even for your enemy to take care, help tell him take care of things. Uh, the law of Sabbath, verses 10 through 13, the six years you shall sow your land and gather its produce. But the seventh year you shall let it rest and lay fallow that the poor of your people may eat, and what they leave, the beast of the field may eat. In like manner, you shall do with your vineyard and your olive grove. So here's what he says. Every seven years, you're not supposed to do anything. Let it lie fallow. And there's something to be said about this. Now, again, if you're not farmers, if you're not an agrarian, we always, a lot of times when I was growing up, we would put out a lot of fertilizer. And the fertilizer would help things grow, but they didn't have that at that point in time. So what you really had to have happen in, in absence of fertilizer, is you had to let the ground rest for you and let it be, rebuild its nutrients before it could be used to, to grow crops again. Well, again, that's what's happening. Now, what's also interesting about this, and as we think about it, you have to realize, okay, I'm, I'm, he's about done, so I'm going to finish. Y'all don't tell him I race now. <laughs> Everybody be quiet. You shall not give a false report, all right? <laughs> it's reporting on your laptop. <clears throat> Oh, okay. All right. Anyway. All right. Here we go. You're right. It is recording on my laptop. But anyway. All right. So see, so here's what happens. Um, every seven years, they were not supposed to, uh, every seven years, every is what they call the Sabbath year. Okay. Now, as we get to Second Chronicles chapter 36, we're going to see that the children of Israel did not do this. And what happens is, remember, how long were the children of Israel in Babylonian captivity? Anybody remember? No? Okay. In the Old Testament, they were in captivity for 70 years. And we know this from Jeremiah chapter 25. Again, that God, Jeremiah through Jeremiah, said that they would be in captivity for 70 years. And that's exactly what happened. Well, we find out the reason why in the book of 2 Chronicles. And here's what he says, Second Chronicles chapter 36. <clears throat> this is the last chapter. And by the way, if um, hopefully you'll take the introduction to the Old Testament class. <coughs> in the, uh, if you're studying from the Hebrew Bible, Second Chronicles is the last book of the Hebrew Bible. Okay, So this is just for your own uh, benefit. Um, Look at 2 Chronicles chapter 36, verse 15. The Lord God of their fathers sent warnings to them by his messengers, rising up early and sending them, because he had compassion on his people and on his dwelling place. But they mocked the messengers of God, despised his word, scoffed his prophets, until the wrath of God rose against the people, till there was no remedy. Okay? 